Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. This is hard to believe in some sense that we're all here doing this right now together through the interweb. Um, but here we are. It's a sign of the times. And today, hopefully, we will all get a chance to share with each other. We're going to do a couple of breakout rooms. And hopefully, we get some sense of connection and perhaps a sense also that we're empowered or we have some agency over what we're all collectively experiencing. Um, we want to sort of describe the intention and the purpose of this webinar series that we're launching today. And as we go through, Ellen and I will speak to different parts of that. And um, that's about it. It's quite, we're not, this session in particular is not going to be too formal and too structured. We have a theme, we have some main topics, and, and we'll sort of go through them as we go. Before we do that, I wanted to, for all of us collectively, to just share, you know, maybe 30 seconds or so. We're going to have a little moment of silence just to collectively honor the I don't know, unspoken angst. I mean, it, it, whatever is going on in the world right now that we're all feeling together. Oh, so let's just take a, a second right now. I find it helpful to close my eyes so I can tune into my own body and sensations, but you do whatever is comfortable for you. When doing this type of thing, I'm always amazed when I remind myself that the experience I'm having inside right now, I'm sharing with you know, all the people here together right now inside. And it helps me feel a little less alone and more connected. So I'll just invite everybody to return. And maybe I'll do a little formal introduction of myself. Um, my name is Mike. I'm the founder of Starts With Me. And we're a consultancy that specializes in K-12 education and workplace mental health. And after an 18-year struggle with mental illness and addiction. I sort of spent every second of the last close to 10 years trying to take care of myself and then eventually learning to help others do the same. And along that journey, I've come to meet and collaborate and work with amazing human beings like Ellen, who is going to be co-facilitating with us today and throughout this series, however long it lasts, in some sense, I hope it ends tomorrow and we can all go back to our normal lives, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So Ellen, do you want to just say hi and then uh, take it over? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Hi everyone. This is very exciting. And I think it's a silver lining given everything that's going on that we can still come together. Uh, so formally, my name is Ellen Choi. I actually met Mike Stroh. Um, when I was around 12 years old, although I don't know if he knew me at that time, but I went to camp, like children's camp, with I remember. an old ex-girlfriend of his, and she would put his picture up beside her bunk bed. So I've been looking at Mike for a few decades now, um, and it's wonderful that we've come together to do this. So the whole intention of this project is to practice, acknowledge topics related to self-awareness, productivity, just communication and getting along with others trapped inside a small home, um, and general well-being. So today we are focusing a little bit more on self-awareness. Uh, so in your chat window, if you can find the chat button, if you move your cursor, the menu will arise. Could everyone just type in one word to describe how they're feeling right now? So it might be anxious because you can't find the chat button. Hey, just one word, Maestro. Well, thank you everyone for participating. There's a real gamut of words we're seeing. So some people are calm and grateful and peaceful. Uh, several people are anxious, confused, uncertain, trapped. There were a couple of trapped. Worried, yeah, for sure, that's for real. Um, thank you for doing that. Uh, we're gonna move just into a quick exercise where we will pair you up randomly into groups of two or three using the breakout room. So it just takes about five or six seconds to transition, then you'll be paired with somebody in this group. 
in that breakout, could you please share what has brought you to join us today? And one thing that you're noticing that you're struggling with. And there's something really beautiful about sharing our common experiences with strangers. Um, so I hope you embrace the vulnerability, but also the shared experience of what's about to unfold. So um, Stro, if you would press the buttons that yeah. you need. <laughs> I just put the two questions in the chat as well for everybody mm -hmm. to see. Okay, so I'm going to create the breakout sessions now. We do encourage people to turn on their cameras for that, um, but that's up to you. And if you can't, then that's my fault and don't worry about it. Okay, I'm, we're sending everybody to the rooms. Good luck. One thing that is so lovely about sharing that is we get a sense of our common humanity which is a wonderfully uh, i guess you could say warming or comforting experience so we often can get caught or trapped in our own minds and our own story of what's happening to us and when we hear other people share theirs it can be a really liberating experience and, and particularly without the need to interrupt or comment or fix or whatnot, just being heard can be, you know, a really powerful experience. And that's sort of one of the reasons why we wanted to do that. So the main, as Ellen mentioned, the main topic today is self-awareness. And so we're going to just go over a couple of main principles of, of, of sort of what the psychological slash um, mindfulness slash, you know, mental health world uses as pillars to describe those things. And the main emotion I think we're going to focus on is anxiety or the main feeling. So anxiety is, I always think about it in terms of worrying about the future. And it's often often um, a worry about a uh, subjective or like a not, not, not an object. So you could think of fear as being fearful of one thing in particular, uh, you know, the simple example that often is used in these scenarios is we're still living, you know, in tribes in the forest, whatnot, and there's an animal running at us to eat us. So that's a sense of fear. The, this thing is coming towards me and I'm being triggered with fear. Anxiety is more about an uncertainty about a variety of things that could happen in the future. In contemporary life or right now, that could be described as the coronavirus and all these other things that are going on in our society. And I mean, I mean we're all kind of trapped in this moment to moment experience without knowing what the heck is going to happen. And there isn't really a, a specific object of the fear or the anxiety. And that's kind of weird. Um, I think we're all in this sort of shared weirdness. And so how anxiety often perpetuates itself is that we overestimate, as you sort of overestimate the danger or the difficulty of the situation that's coming our way. We overestimate the likelihood that it's going to happen and that all our worst fears are going to become real. And, and we simultaneously underestimate our ability to cope and to manage that fear. <sighs> so let's see if I can switch slides here. So how it's described, again, in terms of self-awareness is that we here we go. This is us. <laughs> this is a human. We have triggers and we have, so a trigger would be, you know, you read a news story that is quite, it triggers, you know, a rush of emotions and a cycle of thoughts. And then generally what happens is we have the emotional response first and then the thoughts and our physiological responses kick in. So let's say, you know, uh, I think yesterday, Toronto, so one of the things that's been somewhat helpful for us is going out, we have a little park around the corner from our house, so we've been taking our kids there, and I think yesterday, John Tory said, no more playing in parks or something like that, so that is a bit of a trigger for us, then I start to think, oh my god, what are we going to do, why is this all happening, I get fearful, or I get worried, or sad, or scared, uh, for me, usually my heart pounds a lot, I sweat, and then I have a, a physiological reaction and impulse to act to actually, this is a perfect example too. So a modifier would be an underlying life experience that's not necessarily a one moment. And that is here with us all the time. And that would be right now, this coronavirus thing. So we have two things working against us right now. And it's causing 
you know, I don't know what the words are to put to it. So it just, it's causing whatever it's causing. And we want to put ourselves in a position to deal with it as best we can. Mm -hmm. So So what- Can I jump in for a moment? Please, please, please. Um, I was reading this article yesterday um, and I'm an organizational psychologist. So I study groups, individuals, organizations. Um, This was a Harvard Business Review article, which I loved that they were talking about mindfulness and anxiety and things like this. They described it as grief and in particular anticipatory grief. So anxiety is when we are projecting into the future. If fear is a more immediate present moment experience, we're afraid of something now. Anxiety jumps ahead to the future and it's all the things that are we think might happen and we can't yet control etc 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 and anticipatory grief is this idea that we know that bad things are happening and are coming towards us and we're already getting worried about it and part of that grieving process is acknowledging all the things that we have now we can't do anymore a large part of our life as we know it has been restricted, taken from us, and it's only getting worse because the more serious we get about what's happening, the more real our loss becomes. And I think part of this um, chart, as you're thinking about it, you might explore what are all the things I've had to let go of and what are things that I'm today grieving now. I can't play in the park with my children. You know, the extent to which we should really be out and about walking is different based on what news you're taking in, the work and the significance you gain from the work that you do has been, is changing. The relationships and quality of your relationships because of the pressurized containment of quarantine is changing. Our sense of control and predictability and habit and routine is changing. These are things that we're grieving. And then all the things that you're afraid about, hospitals, death. The invitation here is, can you get more clear on the things that you can acknowledge? And anytime that you find you just don't know, then embrace what John Kabat-Zinn would call your don't know mind. Just not knowing and like honor the space of not knowing and allow that to be okay. I'll send, you know, offer these things to people, but you might want to just practice writing those things down. So what you know, you could write down some thoughts about what are the things that I'm worried about? How does that relate to my emotional experience? Whoops. How does that influence my behavior? And can I become aware of my physical sensations? So one example would be when I'm trying to work at home amongst all of this and my children (laughs) are impeding on this sort of unseen boundary that you know they might be told that it's there but they're not really aware of it what i've come to improve upon and what i practice a lot is noticing when that sensation inside of me starts to arise that's going to lead to an action that i'm not proud of or not that's not nice and when i can notice and for me usually it's sort of this i can feel the energy coming up from my belly button right up here and i start to get tense and when i can notice that i can bring awareness to it and let it be and then i can respond in a way that's much more helpful so that's just a little example Um, and those boundaries and those moments happen all over the place i think one other reflection might be recently we've been managing things relatively well Yesterday, I caught myself getting really irritated and et cetera. I maybe said something that wasn't so nice to my wife. And I was encouraged by the way that I managed to sort of acknowledge that it wasn't really appropriate or nice and then sort of say sorry and acknowledge what I was trying to say, what I was trying to get out. And that helped a lot, right? So another part of this and that we will get through in the other sessions around communication is when those things happen, how do we, you know, as soon as we can, prompt as promptly as possible acknowledge the behavior we didn't like about ourselves or someone else but i was also listening to a lovely interview with a a buddhist teacher or she was a i'm not sure if she was a monk or or not or zen master she was a zen buddhist teacher and she was describing the our collective angst and she said something that i really liked she said there's room for fear 
And there's also room to be fearless. So the more that we can be present in such a way that leaves room for both of these things to arrive, arise, the more we're going to be able to respond in a way that we are proud of um, or can live with. And we also then show other people what's possible. A, a big part of a lot of the things that I think I strongly believe in and that have helped me the most is I have to be an example of the behavior I would like to see of other people. Um, it's easier said than done, no doubt, but it's, I think it's worth repeating. And I repeat it to myself over and over and over and over and over. <sighs> so perhaps, Ellen, do you want to do the exercise now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, just one thing to add, building on what you said, is the more awareness that we can bring, the more you can recognize fear, the more you bring awareness to you know, this whole spectrum that Stroh's shown us on the screen, behavior, thoughts, feelings, your physical sensations. Uh, this is the idea of like label it to disable it or name it to tame it. And the intention of this, I, just the idea of anticipatory grief versus the things that we're losing now and being aware of them is itself a really beautiful practice because once we know once we can see the monster in the closet, it almost ceases to have the same impact on us. Um, okay, so because this is a, the idea behind this is partly workplace mental health. Uh, one of the exercises we wanted to do today is just acknowledge that your attention and ability to focus in these current times may be fractured. So if I think about focus as a flashlight, where you sit down at your computer, you know the task at hand, and you turn the flashlight on, and you illuminate it, and you see what you're doing, and you begin the task. When you're done it, you turn the flashlight off, and you go away. I feel like working right now in these times, it's like you're, the flashlight is, it's like just a diffuse beam that's bouncing everywhere. Maybe it's shining on the computer, but maybe it's shining at the kids screaming at the door that can't get in because you've pushed your couch against the door. I don't know. This made me think of the idea between type one and type two processes in our brain. So when there's this general idea that we have two systems operating, one that is very emotional and abstract, and the other that is more logical, analytical, strategic, tactical. So our higher order thinking happens in type two. But when type one is, is operating, it has the ability to hijack type two. So you can't think logically, you can't think analytically, and you, it's hard to be productive if we haven't acknowledged what's happening in our emotional type one system. So this next practice is short it's something that you can do before you have to to study or work or focus um, and i'd love to guide you through it now so may i ask however you're sitting to actually get a little bit cozy you might sit up a little bit taller if you have something in your hand put it down if your feet are crossed uh, maybe plant both soles of the feet on the floor or sit cross-legged but just in a way that's inviting yourself to practice. Uh, here, if it feels comfortable for you, then close your eyes and I'm going inward. So I'll see you guys on the other side of this. So just finding some sense of physical sensation within your own body. It may be the sensation of breath, feeling perhaps the inhale and then the exhale. It may simply be the chair beneath you or the floor underneath your feet or the weight of your hands resting somewhere, however they're resting. Just noticing how quickly your mind is moving, perhaps thoughts, feelings or sensations within your own body.
and tune in for a moment to your emotional experience. You may even think back over the last couple of weeks and just seeing in your mind's eye the joy, the difficulty that has shown up for you. You may call to mind some of the tense moments, the bickering, the whining, just the struggle. And you may acknowledge some of the people in your life, perhaps that you're having some conflict with. People in your life, perhaps not in your home, but beyond your home that you're worried about. Other loved ones, older generations. folks all over the world, people in other parts of the world that haven't yet been hit by this virus, that when it comes will be greatly impacted. I'm just acknowledging the full gamut of the emotional experience, perhaps even labeling the different things you feel. Busyness, overwhelm, peace, tiredness, worry, fear. As these thoughts become more clear, the feelings become more clear, perhaps even tuning into physical sensations in your body. If you feel worry, where in your body do you feel it? And bringing your awareness back to your breath, taking all of your attention in and around the belly, and just feeling as the belly expands with the in-breath. And then let's go with the out-breath. So every time the mind wanders, just very gently, kindly guide it back. Knowing that you're breathing in when you're breathing in and knowing that you're breathing out when you're breathing out. Good, and just acknowledging your experience and attending to it with some kindness. The same way that you might comfort your children when they get scared. The same way that you would extend loving and gentle words to friends. Can you in any capacity hold yourself with that same kindness? And even if you don't yet feel like you are stressed or overwhelmed or anxious. Maybe just giving yourself some recognition or congratulatory words. Good, and still in your mind's eye, take a moment to visualize what today might look like after you leave this call for it to be a really terrific day. What would need to happen? What are the thoughts that you might have? What are the words that you might say? How might you respond in difficult times? What attitudes, values, might you draw on? What tasks would you like to accomplish? However big, however small. Indeed, what tasks might you let go of? And 
seeing as clearly as possible what the day looks like. Lunch, the afternoon, your meals. If you have children, what are you doing after they go to bed? What needs can you tune into and can you allow yourself to meet them? And take it all the way through to your bedtime routine. See yourself brushing your teeth and washing your face. Picture yourself locking eyes with yourself in the mirror. Maybe here you even extend a kind word. See yourself getting into bed and even picturing a long night of restful, uninterrupted sleep. Good, and then just connect to something within yourself or maybe beyond yourself. And blessing this day with a gentle thought, may this or something even more wonderful unfold. May this or something even more wonderful unfold. And sending a thought and intention out beyond yourself to the community in fact, to the entire world and all living things within it. Perhaps thinking, may you be well. May you find peace. May you be happy. Good, and bringing your awareness back to the breath. Wherever you are in your breath cycle, just gently release the air. We're gonna take three breaths together. So taking a deep breath in through your nose, breathing in together and out together. Again, drawing the breath in, feeling the essence of others around us and exhale. And last time, full breath in and full breath out. Great, and as you bring this practice to a close, just gently opening the eyes if they were closed. Just taking a quick moment to acknowledge and recognize how you're feeling. And I'll pass it back to Mike. Hi, thank you. <laughs> it's so hard to, I find it hard sometimes to want to, or to come back. <laughs> that was really nice, thank you. I had a little bit of water coming out of my eyes, which was lovely. <sighs> Ha. Ah. Okay. We've got about 17 minutes. So what we we're going to do one more breakout room and then we're going to do a Q&A. So the Q&A could either be you type uh, a question into the box or I'm not sure if there's a way to like raise your hand or whatever on this platform, like through the chat, is there anybody? Maybe if you press reactions and then you could put the thumbs up sign if you'd like to ask a question. Where's the reaction button? <laughs> yes. Under, is it? Uh, it's one, two, three icons to the right of share screen. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. I see breakout rooms, but maybe. Okay. Either way, you could just turn your mic on and start talking, mm -hmm. or you could uh, <laughs> put something in the chat. <laughs> okay. So just before we do our breakout room, um, I just wanted to, I guess, reiterate some of the things we spoke about. 
One, um, name it to tame it. So I think you mentioned that in the meditation and also prior. So when we can become aware that we're either, you know, caught in a pattern of thinking or an intense emotion, there's such a beautiful power in just saying, oh, that anger, 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 or fear, 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 or joy, 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 joy. Um, it, it, you know, with the negative emotion, it can help deflate it. And with the positive emotion, it can help us experience it more deeply, which is really, it's lovely. And I know there's a few people on this call who we have a shared teacher and she always says, um, there's magic in the telling. So that to me means describing the either intense, difficult, emotion or the joy so when i'm when i'm aware and present in a moment where my kids are bringing me a lot of joy i might say i might say that to them i just might say it out loud wow this is really nice it's really nice to be here or what you're doing right now is really beautiful and inspiring um, and then on the other side if it's if it's something i'm not happy about i might say you know, what you're doing is making me, or I'm feeling angry as a result of this. Um, so just getting it out of our head and out of our mouths is, is very liberating and free. Oh, and the last little note I had was, you are not your thoughts. <laughs> so sometimes when we are trapped in this pattern of thinking and ruminating or whatever, um, we can kind of get, our, our awareness gets really contracted and we can sort of think that our anger or our fear is reality and is us. And then we behave in ways that are not ideal. Okay. So I'm going to launch the breakout rooms and each person, the invitation is just to say what you're grateful for. Two things, perhaps try to keep it short and we'll leave it to three minutes. Mike, are we supposed to be talking, uh, Everyone's screen's blocked on mine. Yeah. I'm kind of talking. <laughs> You're typing. Like one person's typing, but I'm doing the talking. Okay. Yeah. Whatever worked. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. All right. I think I had my my partner's mic didn't work, so they typed. Okay. So everyone's back. At least the people that are still around. Um. So does anyone have any particular questions? Either type it in or, and just remember questions and usually with a high tone and a question mark. Um, I'm gonna jump in for a moment. Please. So in our first breakout, the two ladies I was speaking with mentioned that one of the reasons they had joined this call was to learn some just ways that they can take what they learn in these sessions and then support others that are perhaps struggling because truly it's like a special kind of cat that makes the time to even come here. And likely we have some sort of shared interest in well-being already. So it's possible that when we go back to our other communities, we're noticing people struggling even more than us. Um, Stro, what would you say are some ways that people can take a simple nugget of some of the things we might've talked about today and then share it back with people that they know are in need of support. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I wanna really reiterate the um, name it to tame it. So, and role modeling that I think is always the best way to do it. So if at all you're in a moment of joy or difficulty, just saying it out loud, it may, if that's not something you do often, it may seem weird or feel weird at first, but it, as you do it more, it's very, very, very helpful. Um, another one would be, so for those of us that have, I mean, it works for anybody, but with kids, I've been maybe surprised slash grateful that I've been 
um, able to respond nicely to them. So when they're really getting work, worked up and freaking out, uh, I name it. I say, wow, it looks like you're really angry. Or to me, it looks like you're really sad. And I don't try to fix them. I don't try to make them stop. I don't try to, you know, manipulate them with candy or treats or whatever. Um, so that's one way. So maybe even, um, there's also a, a beautiful thing about just keeping, doing our best to keep our mouth shut and allowing people to just express whatever they need to express. Um, and actually one thing that Ellen is really good at is, hold on, I want to find it exactly. She says things like, I'm so excited. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Wait, where is it here? <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, she'll say something like, Stro, how can I be supportive? Or what's one thing I can help you with? And I find that really nice. Helen Joy. Oh, that's a nice, Stro. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So those are things you could do, right? So acknowledging the person's difficulty or your own and asking what you can do for them and using I statements. So here we go. Use I statements. I think this, I feel this. To me, it looks like you are experiencing this. To me, uh, you know, it looks like whatnot. And then asking what, um, what people can do. That's my, or what you can do to help people. Awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Does anyone else have a question that they'd like to ask? And I think I we are doing this again. In fact, it'll be weekly. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the window. So Thursday yeah. at 10 a.m. And sometimes yeah. it'll be just stro. I will join as often as I can, as, as often as he'll have me. <laughs> as, uh, yeah. And also there'll be other, so one of our teachers um Heidi Walk she's a medical doctor and a meditation teacher etc she said she would uh lead one for us which is amazing um and so there may be some other people of that nature to join us um i do see someone saying they can't find bill did you want a question or you just i see someone just said you can't find the raise a hand can you see it ellen who's okay so my question is for ellen engaging the workplace remotely um, engaging, engaging how? Keeping morale up. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So there will be many different ways that this question could be answered, but let me offer this perspective. There is a lot of very compelling research that talks about the importance of social connection, touch, recognition, encouragement, all the things that we might get almost tacitly or implicitly when we're at work that now working in all of our own homes away from each other, uh, we've lost. Even if you think about formal versus informal communication, like wa water cooler talk or like meeting up at the coffee machine and just shooting the proverbial stuff, uh, these are gone now, and those are moments that are th these are moments that are studied because they're effective in either creating connection or communicating important messages that are perhaps faster or more efficient to to spread key content through. Um, so, how can you create more opportunities to connect and to have perhaps these informal conversations? Would be how I sort of position the question back to you. Could you have a Friday at lunch period, lunch and learn, where you just host a Zoom chat? You could use the breakout room function. You could say something like, uh, what's going well with work and what's going terribly? And then everyone just gets the chance to chat and connect. Um, you might also have, do you remember those like health minutes that used to come on TV? with the, what is that called? What, Hal Johnson and Joanne McCaff? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Body break. 
Yeah, buy brick. You okay. might create something like that, but we have the, the tech, yes, the technology exists. It's really easy. It just takes one person to agree to be the host. You could have a Monday, like, or a daily 10 minute body break. Um, and I'm saying body break because the importance of physical movement and its linkages to emotional and mental experience are just so well studied. Even like, I think it would be crazy if we don't all end this call with 10 jumping jacks and then see how the rest of your day goes. Um, we hold stress and emote through our physical body. So if you had a, just have a 10 minute something that you do every day and invite people to join in, it might just be asking how you're doing and getting a chance to see each other, which is lovely. It might be some exercise. It might be you just saying, hey, I learned this thing called name it to tame it. This is why it's important and this is what it looks like. Um, it might be inviting other people that have interests in wellness or magic tricks or hilarious jokes or something. But I think there are ways to create online communities and we're doing it right now. So can you emulate this with a work group or a department or your whole company just by inviting them and holding the space? I hope that's helpful. That was awesome. Um, I found Ellen's thing. She says, for tomorrow, how can I support you? That was the question. I couldn't let that, I couldn't let that go. Um, I did think of one thing, and this is to, to Paul's question too, is, is if people are open to it, I'll invite everybody, you can decline whatever, let's create a shared Google Doc or something like that, and we can just start listing resources there. I think that's probably a good idea. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can accept it, decline it, whatever it is. Um, yeah, and look at that, we're at the end. Jokes are good. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Jokes are a great idea. Um, yeah, and I think to just um, to build on what Alan was saying, sometimes those check-ins completely non-work related too. It's helpful to sort of have that go on. Um, I, I, anyway, so we can continue this conversation next time. Uh, I'm thrilled and grateful and happy and yeah if you if you think of any questions that you didn't ask now then perhaps ping them over to us and may i suggest that we literally take one last breath together where you raise your arms lift your chest and then bring your hands back down into your laps so you're trying to do a full circle so ready here we go everyone one two three doesn't that feel nice it does. <laughs> okay. Thanks for thanks for bringing us together, Stro. Yeah. Thank you, and thank you everybody for coming. Um, it's hard to believe that we did it, but we did it. So, peace out. <laughs>